Good afternoon from sunny Queensland in Australia. My name is Manuela Sibu. I'm the founder and director at Ospire Immigration Australia. Welcome to the Monday Live, like every Monday afternoon, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I'm going live on Facebook and Instagram on a particular topic. If you're joining us, just let me know where you're joining us from, the city and the country. Would be great to know where you are, if you're in Australia or if you're outside of Australia. Just let me know in the comments and also it would be much appreciated if you could give this live a like. Um, that would be nice. So that means other people can see activity and then they can join us. The more the merrier. So they say here in Australia. Yeah, so we had three topics to choose from this week. We had New Zealand uh, pathways, visa pathways for New Zealanders. It got zero, <laughs> zero votes. So maybe we don't really have New Zealanders in our audience. N not many people know that New Zealanders, they can come to Australia without needing a visa. However, they are only a temporary resident of Australia. So if they want to become a permanent resident and a citizen of Australia, they do need to go through the process like any other migrant. There is special New Zealand uh, visas for New Zealanders. Okay, so on, only New Zealanders can access these visa pathways. Um, so yeah, so this is something that I can talk about um, <laughs> with people who this, is, who this applies to. So yeah, New Zealand citizens. Like I said, that topic had zero votes. Then the next topic, topic was working holiday visas. So there is three working holiday visas. Um, so you can, if you're meeting all the requirements, you can be on a working holiday visa for three years. Yeah, so three years of working, having full-time work rights, that's pretty good. Um, so that was the second one, and that topic got a lot of votes. And then the third one was small business owner visa. And as you can see in the title of this live, that's the winner. So it was really between topic two and three, the working holiday visa and the small business owner visa. And yes, yeah, so the topic three is the winner and I'm talking about that today. So please put your questions in the comments um, and please make sure that the questions are about the topic, okay? So there's, if you have other questions about other visas, then more than happy to answer your questions, but for that you need to book a consultation, okay? So either you book a consultation um, or if you have the patience and the time, um, hopefully maybe I talk about your topic, but then again, you know, in these lives, I can only say so much and it's rather generic information. It's not tailored to your specific circumstances. So we have a question on Instagram. Is it hard to go to Australia or New Zealand as an immigrant? <laughs> well, if you're offshore, currently it is quite hard. Yes, because the borders are closed. Mm. So only under very... Mm, either you have very specific skills, like for example, you're working in one of the criti critical sectors, or you have a direct family member. So a wife, a, ma a husband, or... Um, yeah, direct family members, or if you are a child of an Austrian citizen, then you also have options and possibilities to enter Australia. But other than that, it is currently very, very hard to enter Australia. Anyways, this is not the topic today. There is other lives. Um, there's other sessions that I've done about um, offshore immigration and I have done a live on travel exemptions so if you go into our library into our video library either the IGTV library on Instagram or the library of videos on Facebook or you can also go to our YouTube channel that's where you find a whole lot of videos and free information okay 
So, um, we've got a few people live on Facebook and Instagram. That is great. Like I said, please feel free to put your questions in the comments and I will get to them. Oh, I should probably also do... Um, I'm gonna, just going to open Facebook, but I'm not sure it may interfere with the stream. Um, I just want to see if there's comments. Because for some reason it's not showing up on my phone. So just bear with me for two seconds. Where are we? Here we are. So, yeah, at this stage there's only one like, so that's great. Wayne, thank you so much for the like. And I also have noticed that you are a very regular viewer, a very regular visitor to our page and you are watching the lives. And also, should you be watching this live as a replay, so as a recording, then let me know also in the comments, just hashtag replay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, and we've got a lot of um, nice comments coming. Wonderful, excellent. So let's get started. So I'll be talking about the small business owner visa for Queensland because not every state has the small business owner visa, and I'll be talking about the one in Queensland because that is currently available and accessible. And I am in Queensland. So, yeah, uh, I thought this is a great visa and not many people know about it. So, and you also voted for the small business owner visa. So, who is this visa for? Well, it is only for people who are onshore. So, that means people who are in Australia already. Okay, so if you're currently outside of Australia, um, like our friend who is, um, has commented on Instagram. So if you're currently outside of Australia, then this visa is not for you. You need to be already inside of Australia. But if you're inside of Australia, then there may be further, you know, we, let's explore further and see if it's something for you. And like always, I have my note. It's um, down to one page. Um, just so I know that I have everything I need that's important that I want you to know so I'm not forgetting anything, especially when there is comments happening. Uh, I may get distracted and then forget something very, very, very important. So we'll be looking at my notes. This will be a, a rather short life, so don't wait too long with your questions. Just put your questions in straight away because I do have an appointment that I have to get ready for as well. Um, and also I have it very compact here, um, short and sweet today. And also the shorter we, we keep these lives, the easier it is for people who watch the recording. And I feel the majority of people are actually watching the recording, which is completely fine. The only disadvantage is that you are not able to engage live with me um, as you would when you join us in the live. Um, but I understand people have to work, people live in other places in the world where there is a different time zone. Uh, it's summer in Europe, so um, my family and friends are enjoying the great outdoors, traveling, uh, well, as much as possible. But there is travel going on in Europe. Um, yeah, I have not been able to leave Australia since March. Uh, yeah, anyways, Mar March last year. So let's get started. Oh, we already have started, but I said it's only for onshore. Okay, so that's very important. Then you need to operate the business in a regional area of Queensland. So it cannot be in Brisbane, but pretty much anywhere else. Okay, so if you're out of Brisbane, it's fine. It can be Sunshine Coast, it can be Gold Coast, it can be inland, but not in Brisbane. So that's important. Um, you do need to have an occupation that is on the current skills list. Yeah, so that's very important because you then also need a positive skills assessment in that nominated occupation. So even though you would be assessed on 
you know, having the business and so on, and it's a small business owner visa, but you still need to have that occupation and you need to meet the requirements of the skills assessment. Now, I'm not going to go into skills assessment details because, again, there's a different life for the skills assessment. So just look in the library where I explain the skills assessment process in Australia. Um, another criterion is you need to have full-time work rights. You need to be able to um, show that you have full-time work rights. So, for example, if you have a 485 visa, yeah, a postgraduate visa, which has full-time work rights, or if you have some sort of other visa that has full-time work rights. But if you have a student visa, that wouldn't work because on a student visa, you're only worked, allowed to work limited hours. So um, you need to employ at least one Australian resident. So by definition, that can be an Australian citizen, it can be an Australian permanent resident, and it can also be a New Zealander who lives in Australia. Okay, so it's quite a broad definition of Aus Australian resident. Um, but yeah, you need to have at least one Australian resident employed and they need to work at least 20 hours a week. Um, it needs to be a pre-existing business. So that means you have purchased an already existing business. The business must have had operated for at least two years and the purchase price must have been at least $100,000. So $100,000 minimum purchase price. Um, you as the applicant um, need to be obviously operating the business and it cannot be a franchise, so no franchise. It cannot be a home-based business. Um, it cannot be a partnership or joint venture and because it needs to be existing, so it can't be a startup. Okay. Um, the requirements are further requirements. There's a lot of requirements. Um, and I may not even cover all of them because there's just, yeah, a lot. But I will cover the majority of the requirements and the most important ones. So you need to also meet, because it's a skilled visa, so we're talking subclass 491. Yeah, so usually subclass 491, so there is two other streams that you may know when you're familiar with the visa subclasses. Um, so one is the state nomination, so without the business, just nominated based on your skilled occupation. And the other one is the family stream, if you are nominated by a family member. Um, and today we're talking about the small business stream, all right? Um, so you still need to undergo everything else that is also required with a normal, the normal four, 419. Um, so you need to have at least 65 points in the points test. You need to be under 45 years old. So that's important. Age. Um, you need to have at least competent English. Again, that's all the same as for all skilled visas. And you need to have had at least six months business experience prior to applying, yeah? That doesn't have to be necessarily in that particular business, but you need to have, you need to show that you have had six months, not just, you know, being in jobs and being employed the whole time, um, over the, your whole career, but you need to show that you have six months as a business owner. And six months is actually not a long time if you think about it. So for normal, regular business visas, so last week, Monday, I talked about the business and investor visas. And if you remember, for most of the business and investor visas, you need to prove that you have, you know, um, a very strong business um, history, very strong business history in the last few years, okay? And here, you only need to show six months. So that's, that's a lot less and a lot lower requirements. And you also don't need the whole, you know, all the net assets and so on that we talked about last week with the business and investor visas. Um, is there any questions at this stage? I'm just refreshing my Facebook. 
Let me know if there's any questions or comments. We've got a few more likes on Facebook. That's nice. Um, we've got a few more people now also live. Mm. <laughs> very, very um, charming comments on Instagram. Um, for all the Facebook live watchers, um, it may be a, a look worth a look to go head on over to Instagram later after the live and um, see the, 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 the lovely comments. I really appreciate that. It's very nice. Um, so I can't see any comments or questions, so I would just continue and actually wrap up. So we, yeah, as, as I told you, it's going to be short and sweet today. And also going forward, I want to keep it short and sweet, especially for the people who watch the replay. Um, I just find and got the feedback that it is easier. Um, and, you know, why not? If we can do it short and sweet, then we do that. So, steps of the application. So, because you may be thinking, oh gosh, you know, all these requirements. But let's say, you know, yes, yes, you have the occupation. Yes, you have the English test. Um, yes, you, you, you have the skills assessment and so on. What, how do you actually go on about the application process? Well, like any other skilled visa application, there's usually at least two to three steps, okay? So there's always the expression of interest. Then there's also the nomination for subclass 491 and for subclass 190. And lastly, there is the visa application. So that is the usual three steps for um, skilled visa types that are nominated by states. With the Queensland Small Business Owner Visa, subclass 491, there is an extra step before you start the whole process. So before you start lodging your EOI, your expression of interest, um, you need to f um, fill in and submit a form, an assessment form. So this is where they do a pre-assessment for you. And this is great because it saves you, it would save you a lot of money. Just in case you wouldn't be eligible, imagine you, you know, start the process, um, you know, you invest and so on. And especially when you're onshore, usually you also have a, kind of a deadline until your current visa expires. And you don't want to waste time, you don't want to waste money, you don't want to waste energy. So like I always say, it's always important to know the requirements and you are confident that you meet the requirements. In doubt, seek advice by a migration agent. Okay, so we, for example, can assist you with this small business owner visa and all the other visa types that there are available. If you're not sure what visas you're eligible for, then the best way to find out is to book in for a consultation. And that's how we assess your eligibility for all the Australian visa types that are, that are available. There's more than a one, 100 types in the system at the moment and they are creating more visas. <laughs> so it's like, um, yeah, it's never ending the innovation um, and the um, development in the immigration system. It's just always continuing, which is wonderful, which is great. Um, one more thing I want to raise before I go is, have you joined, joined our Facebook group yet? If not, I would like to invite you to join our Facebook group. So just look up Ospire Immigration Australia on Facebook and then you should see our page and our group. Yeah, and the reason why I invite you to join our group is because we will be running more activities just and only in the group. So currently we have under 100 members um, and we're looking to get more members, but as soon as we have over 100, I will kick off more activities. I've already been posting more in the group than anywhere else. Yeah, so we um, uh, give preference to Facebook group members. So if you are interested in Australian immigration 
uh, and interested what I'm up to and we as a company and well mainly obviously immigration then definitely make sure that you join our Facebook group Aspire Immigration Australia A U S P I R E Okay friends um I'm just going to hit refresh one more time it is now 20 past 4 so it's been just 20 minutes uh which may even be the shortest live I think with you know with having notes it does help keep me on point and also not having comments also makes it a bit quicker um oh thank you far far as my assistant and um she's a wonderful angel working in the background uh keeping it all together and she just posted in the comment section in the facebook and maybe far can you also post it on instagram maybe you already have um but anyway so this is where you can find the group link um and so there is no comments at least i cannot see any comments in relation to this particular visa subclass that i just explained um then i would wrap up um happy monday have a great week and i will see you next monday with the next topic and please like i said if you watch the replay hashtag #replay and if you have any questions send us a message book in for a consultation we are here we are migration agents we are lawyers we are education agents we can help you with any visa type all right have a good one ciao for now